Russia cannot hide its fleet in the Sea of Azov from Ukrainian missiles. The Russian occupiers understand that it is dangerous for them to have their ships in the Black Sea, so they use only submarines there, Dmitry Pletenchuk, spokesman for the Ukrainian Navy, said. A submarine is more vulnerable at its base. However, there was information that even at its base, they keep them in a semi-submerged state. Only the bridge remains above water. This is one of the methods. They draw the outlines of submarines on the asphalt, for example, and on the pier. These are their means of misleading. A submarine is a rather difficult target while underwater, which is why they came to use these units, Pletenchuk explained. He also added that now the occupiers cannot transfer all their ships from the Black Sea to the Sea of Azov, although they would be much safer there. In Azov, they trained their personnel, even fired four missiles from one of the small missile ships of the Buyan-M project. And after that, they returned again to their base in Novorossiysk. Azov? can be considered relatively safer for them since they have narrowed the passage through the Kirsch Strait as much as possible. But after some objects were hit quite far from the line of combat, these ships also left the waters of Azov, and being in Azov all the time is not an option for them. It is quite difficult to maneuver there. There are shallow depths and a small number of routes, Pletenchuk said. He also noted that it would be quite difficult for the occupiers to withdraw their ships from the Black Sea and Azov seas since these are closed waters. However, there are still options. It will soon be possible to leave the closed water area quietly since the passage of the canals only occurs in the surface position. Therefore, we can say that they are closed here. However, in the event of an escalation and the danger of total destruction, they can always leave this water area and go through internal waters to the Caspian. However, we can only guarantee at least some security in the Azov Black Sea region if there are no combat units of the Black Sea fleet in principle, Pletenchuk said. Ukraine will be able to destroy Russian aircraft if it receives South Korean missiles. Russian President Vladimir Putin visited Pyongyang for the first time in 24 years on June the 19th and signed an agreement with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Details of the agreement are unknown, but Kim said the two countries have a fiery friendship. Experts believe the agreement will lead to closer industrial and military ties between the two countries, which could continue Russia's large-scale war against Ukraine, Forbes reports. The South Korean government immediately responded to this agreement. The country's national security advisor Chang Ho-jin said that if Pyongyang supplies Russia with more weapons, Seoul could provide them to Kyiv. North Korea has not yet announced closer ties with Ukraine, but if it does, it is likely that Ukrainian officials will ask for the same types of weapons that Russia already receives from North Korea. Russia is known to have bought a batch of powerful KN-23 submarine-launched ballistic missiles from North Korea late last year and used them to devastating effect. If North Korea can sell KN-23s to Russia, then South Korea can sell Hyunmu series SLCMs to Ukraine, said Jeffrey Lewis, director of the East Asia Non-Proliferation Program at the Middlebury Institute of International Studies at Monterey. It is not yet known whether Ukraine will ever receive the Hyunmu 2B. However, the US has already given Kyiv dozens of missiles from the Army Tactical Missile System, which have a range of up to 300 kilometers, but insists on their limited use. Washington allows Kyiv to target ATGMs at targets in Russian-occupied Ukraine, but not at targets in Russia itself. That means Russian frontline air bases that house dozens of Sukhoi fighter bombers armed with devastating glider bombs are out of reach, the report says. However, the Ukrainian military can strike these bases using UAVs, but light drones do not have enough firepower to destroy aircraft based at Russian airfields. However, with a few well-aimed ATGMs or other ballistic missiles, Ukraine could potentially disable the entire operational fleet of fighter bombers at the Malshevo airfield in Voronezh, the Ukrainian analytical group Frontelligence Insight noted. However, this could happen if permission to carry out such a strike is received. Even without permission to strike on Russian territory, Ukraine could use South Korean missiles to good effect since there are many valuable Russian facilities in the occupied territories that could be destroyed, Forbes concludes.